Uh, so uh, I will talk about linked data, complex networks, a science, and also about data science. There are things I forgot to put in the title. Okay. Yes. No, no, just mine. Yeah, you can wa watch online my class also. I have all my classes of all my disciplines since I enter in Unicamp are record. Oh. Uh, at the end, I can give you the the website. There is a website where I can find uh, everything you want about uh, ontologies, web. I have a disciplines about web uh, uh, databases, everything. I have almost everything. <laughs> Just kidding, but I have a lot of things there. Even me, I lost. I have, for example, if you are interested, I will talk about graph databases today. I have some lectures about graph databases. I have courses concerning web and other topics. So after, in the end, I can give you the... Because this machine is really slow. If I try to open the browser here, it's already open, but uh, I will not try to do the things. Otherwise, it will just... So, uh, I start my presentation talking about data science, okay? And why are you talking about data science? Because, for me, this is the new perspective, the new way of seeing what we do in the old databases. So, there is a discipline we teach in the, in the undergraduate courses, people call databases, that for me is now changing his name to data science and engineering. But I will talk about data science. Uh, I don't know if you, Claudia I read talk told you about the fourth paradigm. No? She ah, to read it. Yeah. Did you read? <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So uh, this is a really good book. Okay. And uh, in this book, uh, they they summarize some uh, a new uh, problem that is very uh, relevant. Which is the idea is the following. If we go in the beginning of science, thousand years ago, okay, science was empirical and descriptive. Okay, so you go to the fields, you describe the things, the world is beautiful, and you try to put names in things and classify things and everything else. Okay, hundred years ago, people start to think, okay, can we generalize things, produce models? describe do predictions of how the things will go ahead okay and and they started the theoretical branch so you have this all these scientists newton for example that produces models how the things move and so on and so forth and in the last few decades computers start to help a lot okay because now you start to think okay we can do really complex uh, tasks. We can simulate things. And simulating is much more than just, okay, you simulate based on a model. It's true. But when you simulate, you start to see things happen. You start to test things. And people started to, uh, to, to name this thing like science in silico. Science in silico means it's like you, you do the simulations and you test things in the simulation. Today, they, uh, there is the need of a kind of unifying theory. And why? Because we have a lot, a lot of data available. Much more than we can think and process. Okay? And all the areas, all, you, you can get any area you want in science. We have so much data, so much data. We don't know what to do anymore. <laughs> this is the thing. We are lost. So if you get any scientist, what they do? They become specialized. They know this is small branch of the thing. Okay, if you get, for example, biologists that I work a lot with them, okay, the biologists know a specific uh, specialization of a plant with a specific leaf. If you change a bit, it's not anymore his specialization or her specialization because it's too much. They have too much data, they collect. Now we have, uh, it's easy to do that. So we have all these things stored. And it's so much data that even 
There is no person now anymore that can connect this data in his mind or her mind to uh, to produce some kinds of uh, conclusions or rationales over the data. So in some sense, we need much, much more help from machines than what they are doing now. Okay? So machines now, like we can think, not now because now we are changing this scenario, but in the past they are like stupid things, right? We just tell the thing and the machine does. And you tell another thing and the machine does. So it's a kind of a stupid, okay? But now we want a machine that starts to think with us, interact with our brain, or connect our brains thinking about something. We might, we need much more from the machines, okay? There is an interesting, I saw an interesting lecture some one time from Microsoft, and Microsoft published this book here. They are uh, starting a kind of research telling the following. Probably, the cure of HIV is already on our data. Okay? So, it's possible that we don't need to do tests anymore. We don't need to go to the lab anymore. If we just get the data we have and combine them, we can have the cure of HIV. The problem is, we have so much data that this is hard to do. Okay? And if you see scientists in all areas now, all areas, they are not concerned anymore if they have the proper equipment. We have excellent equipment. Okay? They are not concerned anymore if they can go and get the things they need. What all scientists tell us, they have a lot of data. And they need someone to help them to handle, to deal with this data. So this is our problem. Okay, and this is one of the things that started the the, the discussion about uh, big data and so on and so forth. So I will show you some interesting examples, and now I will start to connect. It. I don't know what this is stupid Windows was trying to do here, but you know, I'm happy because these new machines they are so safe, so safe you you can even you cannot use them anymore. They are truly safe. <laughs> they stop working, so not, nothing will happen, and you cannot use them. Okay, so let's go ahead. So uh, this is an interesting thing, uh, uh, an interesting study. I don't know if you know. I start to to connect the idea of data with the web. Okay, do you do you know Google Trends? Google Trends. So this is Google Trends. Okay, and Google Trends. Ah, okay, is in the next slide, but okay. Google Trends is a website, uh, an open service from Google that you can select a set of uh, keywords, okay. And the system will do the following: the system will produce a graph showing you uh, during the time, okay, how much people look at for these keywords, okay, and you produce a graph. And there is an interesting uh, uh, study showing uh, keywords related to H1N1, the, this, the flu disease, the flu fever. Do you remember this thing? Okay. And they, they, they collected data from the uh, International Health Organization about the growth of the disease. And they, they have a graph, okay, of, of the spread and the growth of the disease. And they collect data from Google from the search from keywords of the symptoms of the flu. Okay. And what happened? What do you think? We have two graphs, right? Two plots here, two charts. What happened? This chart almost matched. Okay. Which means the following. We can analyze the, the spread of the disease looking for people but there is an advantage what do you think is the advantage if I, I go in this way you can predict but I mean if the both if if the both uh, graph uh, charts match 
with the other I can also predict. E easier and huh? Yeah, I can identify trends, but uh, if I'm telling that the graphs match, the charts match, okay, I can also identify trends collecting data in the field that people are dying and so on. But there is something here better. What is it? Yes, it can be cheaper, even though you pay the price that is no, not so accurate, okay? It's approximate, but it's true. But there is much more, there is something more. It's faster. It's much faster. Because you don't know, to, you don't need to wa go there, wait to exams and so on and so forth. It's approximate, but it's faster. You can know, do online. You can see and follow online what's happening. Okay? Much faster than if you try to get the data. Okay? And you may imagine not what people are trying to do now, because you probably listen that the Ebola now, it's a real, real problem. Right? And, it is probably there are a lot of people from data science now trying to to address this problem. Otherwise, if if something leaks from Africa, if a small bit of thing leaks from Africa, you to be a catastrophe. Okay, but uh, and and it's possible because now the numbers are uncontrollable. You cannot control anymore. It's much a lot of people there. Okay. And they are, they are, there is some predictions of, uh, I don't know if the next year will be a million of deaths uh, in Ebola if it continues in this rate. I, I listened to yesterday in the radio, this thing. So, so that then what people need to do, they need data to do, understand what's happening. And I'll talk mo ab uh, more about that uh, a bit. Uh, Another interesting thing about data and about uh, how we handle data is how people relate to each other. And for this reason, several people from sociology are working now with us. Okay? And uh, I went to a conference in France last week and we, we have a lot, a lot of people from sociology uh, doing research with uh, data coming from, for example, social networks and these things. And why is that? Imagine how people relate in the physical world. So, imagine you have a party, okay? So, if you have a party, what happens? If you want to, to talk to someone, you most physically approach to this person, okay? You go there and you start to talk with this person. So, the physical space, is in some way you define how people you relate in this part, okay? So you can see the people and you see who is relating with each other. Okay. Good. The problem is when you go to the virtual, the virtual thing is different because now we don't have the physical space anymore. But we still have limits. People we still have limits, okay? They cannot just talk to everybody in the same time. The time is limited. The, 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 the ability of our brain to handle different people are different. So, in some sense, you need to define how these people, you must to channel how these people you connect. Okay? And what happens if you get big uh, social networks like Facebook? There is some algorithm there. Okay, that will decide, right? Okay, I don't know how many of you, how many of you have, has more than 200 friends in the Facebook? It's not recording here because they cannot see you. <laughs> okay, so if I have more than 200 friends in the Facebook, the problem is, uh, they produce a lot, of, a lot of things, right? It's impossible for a person to see the posts of 200. And I'm just telling, there are people that they ha they have 400, there are people that have 600 uh, persons as friends, okay? And it's, it's impossible to see the posts of all these persons, okay? So, what happens is, uh, uh, Facebook will not put the posts in the, in the 
time uh, as they appear. So if you think that Facebook put the post because it appeared, the last post appeared, it's not true. It's not possible. Okay? What happens is Facebook will run some algorithm to decide what is the post you will see. But based on what? What do you think that uh, Facebook will decide us? If you are Facebook, what is the variables you want? Hmm? Things you like. You think this is the, 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 the challenge. But uh, consider I will hire you, okay? To, 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 to produce some algorithm to select the posts, okay? And I'm in, I'm in Facebook, okay? I have some goal, right? So your algorithm will, will achieve some goal for me, okay? What do you think is the goal? The goal of the selection. Because if you do an algorithm, you have some goal, right? And what is the goal? For example, is the post you make you happy? What's, so what's the goal? Relevant. Huh? So relevant. relevant? Do you think it's relevant is the goal? Ah, uh, if the relevant things are important, I don't think the television will like uh, the thing we see, right? So, which uh, will click on the... to buy something. To buy something? Can be. Yeah, it's interesting. You spend more time, right? Well, this is the thing, okay? Uh, I want... It's, it's, I think it's much simpler than happy or sad, doesn't matter, right? If you stay there, Okay, because I don't know what's your feelings, I don't care. If you stay in the network, this is my goal, because if you stay, you click on things to buy, you, you, you give me more movement to, to advertisements and so on and so forth. So the goal is, I want something, okay, that makes people stay more or come back more times. Because you can leave and you come back. So it's like, I want to give you something to come back. And to come back and to come back. Okay? So this is my goal. And what I you do? I you design an algorithm to do that. But what is the, how are the variables? Human beings are complex, right? It's not just the like. It's not just, there is the, for example, probably men like uh, more posts of women or not. I don't know. It can be on the opposite, uh, or or cutie babies. Uh, I don't know. Uh, can be uh, many things. Okay. Then you can imagine that, and people do that. For example, if you see the the, the competition of uh, uh, Netflix, all right. What what they do? You just, for example, Netflix. You have several teams that design algorithms. Okay. And you can give to each team like one million of persons. One million is enough. Okay? For any statistics, one million is a good number, right? Okay. So you give you one million of persons and you will design an algorithm to do some kind of, uh, you will, uh, offer or you will suggest to, to people movies. Okay? And what happens? You put several algorithms to compete. They can be machine learning. You know what's machine learning? Okay? The machine try to learn patterns. What the behavior. And try to predict what is the best for something. Okay? So, for example, a pattern can be what a person, what makes a person to stay. For example, or what makes a person to find some movie, to select some movie. And this machine learning algorithm can learn patterns of a million of persons. It's a lot. Okay? And then start to, 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 to do a devices. But then you put several algorithms to compete. And what you do? You pick the best. Ah, but what did this algorithm does? I don't know. Sometimes I even don't care. Okay. The algorithm just achieved my goal. In the Netflix, for, exa for example, will be, say, uh, what is the, uh, stay more in Netflix or pick more movies or, uh, return, come back more times, can be this uh, the, the, the challenge. So the interesting thing is, we are achieving a point in which algorithms are defining uh, 
how we relate. And it's much more than you can consider. Let's consider the following. There is uh, uh, an interesting math course in the model of statistics. The, the professor starts telling the following. Uh, the world is unpredictable in the unity, in the instance. Okay, One unit is unpredictable. But it is predictable in the average. Okay? So you, if you have an average, it's predictable. Okay? So if I have, for example, a coin, and I toss a coin, it's unpredictable which the one thing. But if it's thousand times, I can predict it. Okay? And you may imagine that in 2013, uh, Facebook has 1.11 billion. <laughs> and this is a huge average. Okay? This is a huge mass of data to predict. So let's consider what they can do. Look on this chart. This was published in the Facebook uh, website. Okay? This is not something that I'm inventing here. Okay, so this is a study. <laughs> okay? So you see in the, in the vertical scene, posts, number of posts in the timeline. And you see in the horizontal scene, in the zero point, someone started a relationship. And how they know? You put there in a relationship. You know that, right? Facebook, in a relationship. And a person, a, a hurt thing, and so on. You know that. Okay. Okay. So in the, in the point zero, someone started a relationship. Okay. What, they, what happened? In the average, we are talking about millions of people. It's not just 10. Okay. Before, when they are single, they put much more posts, okay? <laughs> and then <laughs> the things start to drop down, okay? <laughs> okay, the person is happy. He doesn't want to enter in the, in the Facebook to put posts. But see this thing now, this thing here. This is the uh, emotions, okay? So there is an area of uh, web research, okay? Which we call... Um, uh, we call sentiment analysis. Okay, so what is sentiment analysis? Now we need a lot to analyze the sentiment of people. Why? Because, for example, consider now this race for election. Okay, this race for election. What happens now? So I must. I forgot to put here. There is a movie you must see. That, that is for me, is the old-fashioned way to use this data for elections. Okay? The name of the movie is Crisis is Our Business. I can, after I can show you. Crisis is Our Business. And they show an interesting case of an election. Okay? Uh, let me see if... No, it's not there. So, wh what they show, they show that uh, there is an election uh, in a country of South America. I, I always forgot the country. It's a country of South America. It's, it's true. It's not, it's happened. It's not a fiction. It's a documentary. And I don't know how they allow it to do this documentary. Because they got images and things happening in the backstage. So what happened? A candidate hired a company in the United States specialized to win elections. Okay. This is, they hired these guys. And it's before the, the, before the internet, no, not internet, but before Twitter, Facebook. There is no this thing in that app. So they cannot use these things. Okay. What they do? This is the following. They just tell the, the president, okay, we will, we will do for you the thing. Okay, so the thing is, the pre the candidate appears in the television and tells something. It appears with dressing something. Okay, what will I address? I address, uh, for example, in 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 the elections in in Salvador. Okay, probably everybody of you knows about Antonio Carlos Magalhães, which is 
is now dead, right? But in, in, in that epoch, when, in the, uh, when they run the elections, they don't put the... How can I say palito in English? Huh? A suit? They, they don't put a suit. They put like just a t-shirt. Okay? With uh, stripes, coloring of uh, the, the flag of Bahia, but just a t-shirt. Why? They, go, they want to give an impression they are with the people. They are not someone like, you know. So what happens is, in this, uh, this documentary, this company selects what will be the dressing of the, the candidate, okay? And then the candidate, for example, goes to television and, and tells something, okay? So what they do? They don't have Twitter. So, so, so they, they do the following. They go to several parts of the country, okay? And they, they, they produce a kind of observation poll, which is a rule with these glasses that uh, are, are, there are mirrors, mirrors, mirrored glasses, so you cannot see who is behind them, okay? And there are someone that go on the streets asking people, do you want to, to do a kind of interview with me? I will pay you, like, say, $100 just for a day or just for a morning. Okay, here you go. So they just get people uh, in, in by chance. It's not, uh, you know, must be anyone in several different places and they put them together in a single room like 10 people and one guy, one guy trained to talk with them but they are not they don't know what this guy wants this this guy talks about everything okay let's talk about the weather let's talk about the you know and then let's talk about the president also in the middle like okay and then the candidate okay and then the people will talk ah oh, you know this guy is too much you know yeah, uh, the way he dresses and the thing he told. So there are behind the 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 mirrors, the the the, the glasses. There are a lot of people collecting data and writing things and uh, and these these guys collect statistics from the entire country. And this is in the movie. You must see it. It's really interesting. And they collect the data. And in the next day, they tell to the candidate. You must tell this thing, you must promise, promise this thing, you must dress in this way, you must... So, so they use the statistics to define how the guy will behave, okay? And, and sometimes the president tell, but I don't know if this is the thing that I will do. And they tell, we, you don't hire us to tell what we will do, because we are not hired to give you advice to run the country. You hired us to tell you what you need to tell people. <laughs> this is the thing. <laughs> you, what, what people want to listen from you. This is the thing. Okay. The other thing is your problem. If you do or not, it's your problem. Okay. So now imagine now, now the elections. Okay. So they have this, uh, in, 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 uh, there is an area people now call web science. People are doing a lot of observatories. What are observatories? Are engines that collect data from these things like Facebook, Twitter, all these things. They do sentiment analysis. They do other kinds of analysis. And online, they can trace what's happening. Okay? So a candidate like Dilma goes to the television and tells something. And they see online, oh my god, this is a stupid thing. No, no, no. Okay? So if you may imagine... What happened when people went to the streets? If you observe it, do you remember that epoch people went to streets? What started to happen is that the president starts to tell the people what they want to listen. Even though they didn't do anything. <laughs> they just tell people, okay people, we'll do the following, we'll do this thing. We change the constitution to do the thing. And then the following day, the specialist told, this is not possible to do. Doesn't matter if it's possible to do. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. They just get the statistics and tell the, the president. If you want to, 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 if you want to avoid an impeachment, <laughs> you must tell the thing. Okay? And the president gets it. Okay, this is impeachment and non-impeachment. Okay? So I tell the thing. Doesn't matter. Okay? 
So uh, uh, you can do this the thing. You can follow and run and tell and, and decide. Yeah, okay, and now if you listen to the radio and you follow the candidates, they are telling, for example, when Marina uh, presented the program of her government, okay, they give a lot of opportunities to people hit her candidature, okay. So now the both other candidates you, is, is, is delaying the presentation. How they do that? How they know this thing? So when they hit something, they go to the statistics and see, oh, this is good. This is dropping her. Is the, the thing. But it's not like in a week after. It's in the same time. Sometimes I, 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 I can imagine that someone is in the television doing the debate and someone is starting to talk something and see the graph. No, 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 no. And there's people in here in the phone. No, don't tell that. Go ahead. <laughs> change, change, change. No, change the subject. <laughs> Just finish this thing. We got, uh, you see? So, uh, this is important to understand uh, why there are several persons uh, interested in that. And recently, there is an interesting Facebook, uh, there is an interesting paper that produced a lot of. Uh, uh, debate about ethics, which is a is not this one. This one is about the statistics. I I I forgot to get the other one. But they, uh, if you wish, I can I can give you the the references. There is an interesting paper talking uh, 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 experiment. It was Facebook with some uh, uh, American university. I don't know which one. I don't remember if it was Stanford or something, showing the following. That you can affect the, the mood. You know the mood? The humor. The mood of people filtering the posts in some way or another. Okay. So now we are not talking about analyzing. We are talking about interfering okay so what is the thing in this paper they show the following they got a, a, a sample and for this sample the algorithm that I told you there is an algorithm filter the posts right so this algorithm you do a sentiment analysis and you filter just good posts just happy posts just you know oh the world and you will get another sample and you filter posts just with bad posts. Oh, this word is a mess, you know, everybody in this part. And they show it that in average, this sample here, okay, changed the behavior to people that consumed these posts uh, tend to put better posts, posts more positive, okay? And this group here tend to put sad posts, okay? So, it's not like a lot, but in the average you can prove that you change the mood of persons filtering the posts, okay? So, this is a lot, this is huge, okay? If you are sad now, it's possible that someone is filtering your posts, okay? So, <laughs> I'm sad. They are filtering my posts. Okay. Uh, but we, if we go to science, we have other problems like uh, human genome has 3.3 billion of base pairs. A lot of data and a lot of connections. And we have an area which is bioinformatics that's trying to handle this thing. So, Bioinformatics now is much more computer science than biology. Sorry, sorry for the biologists, but it's basically algorithms and things. So if, he, if someone is doing the <coughs> bioinformatics discipline and you get the book, we are talking about algorithms, okay? Because just this is a code, right? And several combinations and so on and so forth. Let's talk about uh, uh, this paper interesting. What Walmart knows about customer habits? Okay. 
So the thing is, if you have a lot of data, you can predict. And, and this is old. 2004 is old. Okay. But this is an interesting paper talking about uh, Walmart start to predict what will go happen. Will go happen. Uh, uh, instead of waiting to happen. Okay, so uh, why just put all kinds of products and see if people consume? Let's analyze the people behavior and let's predict. Okay, I hope, I, I consider, I imagine at least that these big uh, food chains like McDonald's, they have these things in their programs. Okay, to produce in advance the sandwiches. Okay, and Otherwise, the lines will be much, 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 much bigger. Okay. So, uh, but how you do that? So they tell, okay, we didn't know in the past that the strawberry pop tarts increase in sales like seven times their normal sales rates ahead a, a hurricane. Okay, <laughs> why? Doesn't matter. It's just statistics. It's just numbers. Okay, it's like I told you about the what. What uh, what will you, will give you? Uh, uh, what is the elements that uh, uh, make you stay more in the Facebook? Doesn't matter. It's uh, just a bunch of variables, okay? And pre hurricane top selling eating was beer. This is this is easy to explain, right? And this is easy to explain, okay? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> Uh, that is this movie also, the, which is interesting, Moneyball, that shows how uh, data can be used to, to define a strategy, to games, how you can use data. And you tell you a sad thing now. I break your heart now. Yeah, but now I break your heart. German and big data. This is, this is not, you know. Uh, there is this interesting article here that shows that uh, Germany, the German team in World Cup, they make a, a, a collaboration with SAP. Where is this SAP guy? You. Okay, you are your fault, okay? <laughs> you know that, right? <laughs> they did this uh, disagreement, so SAP produced tools to use data to define how they can play better okay. to, 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 to win the game okay. and it worked, right? <laughs> it worked Yeah, exactly. In fact, it's not just sports. I think in all areas, we are learning business, science. We are learning that data is just it. Data, okay? Is we we need a lot, and we are learning about that. You know, if you are not you, you if you don't know how to handle data, in some years you will not be a scientist anymore. If you think, for example, I don't know biologists or Okay, or people from chemistry. Chemistry is you? Who is chemistry? You. Okay. Ah, I like the labs, I like the tubes, but you know, I don't like data and handling data. You will not be a scientist anymore. Okay? You just do funny things in the lab, but you will not be a scientist anymore. Okay? And even a biologist. Ah, I like to go to the field and see the birds. Okay, this is good. But if you don't like to handle the data after that, you will be just a... Uh, uh, guy that like to see words, okay, and because scientists now and in any area is a lot of data and that's it, okay. So uh, this is the uh, 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 clip of the paper telling that uh, they SAP developed this match insight to assist players and coaches to prepare themselves upcoming matches, okay, and. Thank you. 
No, no, doesn't, it doesn't have relation with the movie. I'm talking about, break your heart about the competition Brazil and Germany. Okay. It's another topic. Okay. It's not a movie. The movie has another thing. No, I understand. The, the connection of the movie and this thing is, they use data to make, to make decisions. Right. Just this thing. The movie is not to you break your heart. I'm talking, what you break your heart is, we lost seven for one. This is you break your heart. You don't remember? <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing. Now you you know you understood? Okay. <laughs> yeah, this is the thing. How they correlate. And correlation is the next topic here. How we correlate this huge volume of data. How they do that? And we are still in the beginning. We are still starting this thing. Okay? And this is the thing. So then we go to connections, linked data. So now I show you a lot of uh, facts, a lot of things. I will show you a perspective. This is not the only perspective. This is not, this is a, 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 a just things you can see and you see how people are starting to think how they will handle all this data. And linked data, I don't know if you listen about linked data, you know what is that. And I will show you what is the idea by an example. Okay? And, and the idea of how we connect the things. So you know Wikipedia, right? You know Wikipedia and you know that in Wikipedia there is this thing we call Infobox. Okay? And the, the interesting thing about Infobox is not just free text. Okay? They have free text. But in the info box, they have mm, a table with more organized data. For example, if you have a country or if you have a city like Paris, you have what is the country it's, it's part of, what's the region, and so on and so forth. And it's not just a label, it's a link to a page of the country. It's a link to a page of the Ile de France, which is the region is, oh, where Paris is inside, okay? So what you have, in fact, you have several concepts linked, and also a lot of text. But there is this project, named DBpedia, and what is their idea? Okay, let's consider that each page is a concept. It's, I think it's fair enough, okay? And, uh, so I will produce a graph, and I will tell that each node of my graph is one of these concepts. If I have a page about fr Paris, I will have a node Paris. Uh, France, a node of France, and so on and so forth. And I will transform the links between, among pages, in edges between nodes. And I can also analyze the label of the links. For example, if the label of the link is region or is country, I can now start to standardize this thing to know, oh, what is the, the chapter of some place, what's the country of each city depends on, and so on. And in fact, uh, I will not give you the details, but if you want, you can look my presentations about linked data specifically or semantic web if you wish. Then you transform the nodes in something we call URI. And the URI will give an unique identifier to each concept. And they can even put URIs in the relations. So we will produce a kind of vocabulary of things and relations. And the interesting thing here is machines can navigate on this thing. It's not just for, it's not for people anymore. It's for machines. They can go to the graph, they can collect the data, and they can relate things. So, what, how much they have? Just in the Wikipedia. Four million of things. Okay? 
3.22 uh, classified. So they not just in, uh, recognize, they classify it. So they know that there are uh, uh, this number of persons, places, creative works, organizations, species, diseases. All these things are in a graph related to, uh, to each other. It's international, so you have uh, uh, this number of languages, uh, millions of things in several languages, and so on and so forth. So you have just in the Wikipedia a lot of interrelated information. Okay. So you may imagine what a machine can do is that there are several researchers handling just that. And it started, if you see, in 2007, this is, was the, the idea of the following. Imagine that I have other databases, not just the Wikipedia. For example, friend of a friend, folk, is a database. Geonames is a strong database, which has, uh, Geonames has names of geographic parts of the Earth, and they are organized in, in the, uh, administrative organization of the thing, so you know what's the countries, what's the cities, who is chapter of what. But they have also geo, geospatial information. So you can have, uh, 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 geographic information about where is the city, what is this, the, the, what we call the center, the, okay, there is a name, I don't remember, of the city, geographically talking about. So we have a lot of geographic information. And this information are connected with the Wikipedia. And connected with other, you see, US census data. So what they do? If I have a node in the graph, and this node has an URI, which is a unique identifier. If GeoNames is talking about France, it's use the URI of France in the Wikipedia. Okay, it is used the same identifier, so it connects the things. So the graph in the geonames is connected with the graph in the Wikipedia, which is connected with the graph in the U.S. Census data, and so on. So you have this graph here in 2007, this size of graph in the November of 2007. Here is 2008, 2009. 2010, 2011. So, just, just try to imagine what you can get from this huge volume of interconnected data. Okay? This is a lot. About several subjects. Music, movies, and whatever animals, species, and geographic information. Everything is there. Everything connected. And each of one of these bases, there are people are updating it, people adjusting things, people doing things. It's a huge volume of data. And this is 2011. Then they stop it, because it's not possible anymore to see the dots, the, the nodes. Okay? And uh, there is another interesting thing. Uh, uh, when the, the content is produced, for example, by people in social networks, uh, okay, what we call social content. So you have content and people produce this content together. What we can infer of this thing, there are a latent <coughs> semantics in the content produced by people. Even if you think, oh, there is nothing, there is just labels, there is just in everything people do, you can extract some Latin semantics, and here you show you an example. So imagine that you are searching for a pet, okay? So probably you know Flickr, right? Everybody knows Flickr? So Flickr is this thing where you can find pictures, you can have your photo album and so on, okay? I have an account in Flickr with some pictures if you want to do it, okay? Okay, so we are looking for a pet. And what happens? You put a keyword, pet. And, I don't know, but it's probably not pet shop boys you are looking for. Okay. So, uh, 
but then you can see you you receive this return here and uh, if you if you look to the the to the the words what do you think uh, this pet refers to i think th there are pictures there i i i remove it then just to you see just the, the the keywords what the thing the pet word means in these pictures domestic uh, animals right and how do you know that because the other keywords okay what you are doing correlations okay this is a thing we do all the time we correlate things okay so you you know the 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 semantics of pet just correlating it and this is interesting because nobody told you oh pet is this you know nobody described you just correlating so if we go to this another example how do you know what is the meaning of pet here? These plastic bottles, right? Pet. And you can see just correlating things. So, again, this is the first group. Always, I, hi I like to highlight the dog with the yellow glasses, which is really good, right? Yeah, I like this one. Okay. And there is the, the plastic bottle. It is the second group. Uh, how do you do that? You may imagine that I have a graph. And I, you stay in the idea of a graph. Graph, 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 graph. And you understand afterwards why I'm doing that. And then, uh, in my graph, I have uh, tags. So I can imagine that each, each node is a tag. I have resources. So each node is a resource, like a picture in this case. Okay, And I have users. What happens is we have this graph where users put tags in resources. I can produce this graph here. And I can start to do correlations. For example, uh, I know that the patty appears together. Cat, dog, cat and dog and animal appears together dog and cat and kitty so you see a group of tags that co-occur in a kind of cluster here and there are another group of of uh, of uh, tags like pet and bottle pet and recycle that appears together in another group here okay in another cluster and they are separated okay they are not connected but then, when I tell that, someone asks me, but it's possible that someone put a picture with a dog and a pet bottle and you have all the tags together and you break your algorithm, right? And what's the answer to this problem? Is a solution? No, it's a problem. <laughs> Because uh, I, I'm telling you that I, I can I can have you see there in this in this thing I'm doing that I have uh, pet in some meaning related to these words. Okay, so I I define the meaning of the word, not describing it, just relating with some another note. So I know that I have two two different interpretations for pet. I know that. Okay, and the first interpretation is the left one. And the second interpretation is the right one. But why it's important to know that there are two meanings, even though I don't know what is the meaning? Why is important? Why I use this thing? To cluster the data, but what more? But what is C different? What? It's, it can be a step to, to extract a semantic. But let's consider in some application. Which application can be, uh, which application can get advantage of this kind of distinction? Searching. 
Put out searching. Searching. Philip, yes, searching. Why searching? Because I can have a more smart searching, a more meaningful searching. Because now I have two meanings of pet. Okay. And so, but the problem is, I'm telling you that I'm correlating. And since I'm correlating, I can know that there are two distinct meanings for pet. But the problem I told you is, if I have something that connects both, the, it will break my thing, right? And what's the answer to this problem? It's possible, but in the problem that I told you, there is a guy with a pet bottle and a dog, for example. So we will have everything together, let's say. I'm producing here a problem that uh, it happens, right? If you have a lot of, uh, a lot of pictures, it happens. If you have some picture there with a bottle and a dog, I can, I can assure you. And Flickr is so huge now that it you have. I can put here and you see. And what is the solution? It's not. It's, it's it's simpler than that. It's simpler. No, you are no too complex. No, it's just the statistics. What's the solution, statistically speaking? Huh? Uh, too complex. It's still too complex. It's easier. These things, these things will disappear in the average if they have a lot of data. I mean, this is an exception. You not have three or four these things, okay? And if you are talking about average, okay? So remember I told you, and this is important when we handle these things. We need a lot of data. Because, remember, the things are unpredictable in the units. And if you have not much data, it's, yeah, it becomes more and more predictable if you have more and more data, okay? And then, if you are talking about that, if you have millions of data, and I had a student that worked in this problem with millions of tags from Flickr, it, it, it disappears in the average. Okay? So you can now have some kind of uh, uh, groups of semantics based in the correlations of the things. So, okay? And uh, you can even analyze deeper and then comes to the thing you told. You can do you, you can do correlations deeper. And there is an interesting paper, if you are interested to see, that the guy produces the entire taxonomies. Okay? They try to analyze things like uh, okay, animal is more general than pet, and pet is more general than cat, and it, it's possible to do that. Uh, looking on the co occurrences, like uh, for example, uh, Whenever cat appears, pet appears, for example. Okay, so you can see cat is included on pet in something. Okay, but the opposite is not true. So there is a kind of analysis, but not so simple because you must handle a lot of data to statistically define the things. So you can uh, define inclusions. One group is included in the other group, which is included in the other group. And you can produce taxonomies. So there are people work with an area that I worked in the past that we call folksonomy, which is trying to capture the the how people classify things, the latent semantics of classifications of things. And you can even analyze if you have some networks. It's not the Flickr case. Flickr in Flickr just the just the author puts the tags, right? But if you get, for example, delicious or any kind of bookmark uh, service, okay? For the same address. Oh, Pinterest. Probably, pay, oh, I can use the Pinterest. Yeah, uh, you know Pinterest? It's P Pinterest. How, how we tell it? Pinterest or Pinterest? Huh? Pinterest. You know what is it? You are too old, right? Oh. Old generation, they don't know. But you know what Pinterest? No, no, nobody knows. Who knows? 
You just go to something, to some image, and you pin it. And it appears in your collection of things, and you can put a comment, and people do collections, and I don't know exactly what's the point. I'm trying to understand, but it's funny. Okay, but the thing is, for the same um, address, for the same picture, several people can put tags. Okay, which is different from Flickr. And this difference makes you reinforce tags. Okay, and the system can even suggest the most used tags, and you produce the cycle of if someone uses an device, you use more and more and more and more. So, for example, cat. Probably cat is exactly the most important thing to describe this picture. Kitty is the second one. But there are some stuff that can even disappear if you have, you know, Canon is a machine that took the picture. So it can even disappear if it's not the irrelevant things you want. So I pushed you to think data in a graph, okay? I'm trying to tell you, okay, we can use data in a graph. Is there it's important to understand, it's, the it's not the only way to do the thing. I'm showing you just one approach. Think data in a graph. So data in a graph is interesting to do analysis. Uh, for example, let, you can imagine that uh, Le Miserable. You know Le Miserable, Victor Hugo? No? No? Oh my god. Okay, the word is lost. Huh? You saw the movie? I didn't see. It's good? It's good? Yeah. So, oh no, no, I see the movie, but there is a new one. I didn't see the new one. I see, I saw the old one. Okay, but but it, there is the 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 each node is uh, each node here is uh, a character. Okay, and if the character appear more times, it's bigger. Okay, and the connections is. Uh, when the characters interact in the in the story, okay. So there is someone that did this thing, and then if you see the graph, you can analyze and see who is the the main characters is Volgen, which is the main character of the movie, okay. And you can see uh, who is the other persons that are important to him, the clusters of relations, and so on. And people are putting data in a graph. So I can show you two interesting examples. There is one example we call Bio4G. So Bio4G, the people are trying to get the most of the data they can and put in a huge biological graph. Okay, so they can correlate data about, for example, uh, genomes, phenotypes, diseases, enzymes, uh, proteins and so on and they are just plugging everything together in a huge graph this is the idea and there is also the genontology I don't know if you know genontology genontology is a wonderful is a beautiful work they are not just in putting data in a graph it's an ontology I do not have time here to explain the details what what is an ontology but I have courses, entire courses about that, or, or talks, if you want. But the idea is you can, in some sense, formalize the knowledge in such a way that machines can interpret. Okay? And the, the most, the most uh, used model for ontologies is a graph. A graph of knowledge. Okay? And then, uh, genontology did that. So, they put the knowledge about genomes, uh, uh, the, the proteins produced by genes, uh, the cellular processes that are affected by, by these proteins, or where, where they found the proteins or the genes or the things. So they have mapped, and all these things are connected with papers uh, uh, to, to have traceability of if the data you can trust in the data. So it's a beautiful thing in, and they have a data curation thing in the sense that there are people taking care of the, the, if the data is right, if the, if you can trust the sources and so on. 
And since I'm talking about graphs and graphs and graphs, I will enter in an interesting subject, which is complex networks. And this is inside the graphs, inside the scenario of we have graphs, and we want to use graphs to analyze data. Complex networks is an interesting approach of seeing the data. Okay? And what's a complex network? A complex network now is considered a field of study. And it was developed, uh, they, they see each other as a field since 99. Even though people are doing things even uh, earlier than that, they see them together as a field in 99 okay and what they are trying to do they try to get any kind of discrete system and try to represent in terms of entities and relationship but what is a, a, a discrete system can be a social network can be some physical events in the in the nature can be connections in your brain all the things and you will represent them as a network. But what's the, what's the difference about everything I told before? Not all networks are the same. And this is one really, really interesting thing that I'm still trying to understand. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> I think most of people that work in this thing is still trying to understand. And I will show you, this is not so easy to grasp. The thing is, okay, all the graphs are the same thing. Can I see all the graphs are the same thing? If you get a graph that represents, if you get a graph that represents some relations of things that happens in the real world, in the real world, okay? And you represent in the graph. This graph will probably have some non trivial topological features that interest us for complex networks. And which features are there? So I'm, I'm telling not any graph. If I produce an artificial graph, it's possible that it will not have these features. And which, which features are that? What are the non-trivial topological features? They are real-world like networks. And what real-world like? I'm calling real-world like because we see these properties in networks produced from the real world. We see these properties. But I'm not telling that you cannot produce a network with these features that doesn't come from the real world. I'm not telling that. I don't know if it's possible, I don't know, but I'm telling you that if you produce a network getting data from the real world, it has, it is not, it's not purely regular. What is a network purely regular? What we call lattice. So for example, get uh, several nodes and connect all nodes together. All nodes. So each node ha is connected with all other nodes. This is a regular network. And it's not a complex network. Okay? A random, purely random network. So you define an algorithm that randomly connects nodes. This is not a, a <coughs> complex network. Because they are not real world like networks. But what I get if it's a real world like? They have two important properties. They are scale free and they have the behavior of a small world network. What is a scale-free network? The degree <coughs> of distribution of the, the distribution of the degree of the nodes follows a power law. So what is the degree? So consider I am in a node <coughs> and I have edges to other nodes. This is will be my degree. Okay? So I have not much nodes with a lot of connections. A lot. So it's a power. Okay. And uh, a lot of nodes with not much connections. Okay. So 
the distribution of the degree is like this power law. So if you get, for example, the connections of your brain represented in a graph, and you count the degree of the things, if you follow the power law. If you forget the connection of people in a social network, and you count the degree of each node, if you have a power law. If you have, if you get several real world events, and you represent as a network, and you count the degree of the nodes, you get a power law. If you do a random network, and you count the, the degree, you will not have a power law. So it's not any network. It's not a synthetic network. And why is that? Who can tell me why? It's not easy. It's, a, it's a yeah, it's not easy. Yeah. There is some hierarchy. Not necessary. In, 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 in the social relations, there are no hierarchy. But there are people that are famous and high connected. And there are people that just have small well, connections. And that's it. It's the world. I, I, not, I, not, I just tell you. I don't know. If you have some answers, probably you can publish a paper. I don't know. It's true. I mean... If I get a network, a specific network, I can get it and explain, like, people. Ah, there are people that is related to several people, and there are people that is not, there are just some are not much friends, and for this reason it's a power law. Okay, and if you have neurons, you have an explanation for the neurons, and if you get the, you can get anything you want in, that comes from the real world, and you will give an explanation, but why? All these networks have this common behavior. I don't know. And I don't know if someone can explain it. It's just curious. It's just interesting. But it's much more. There are much more things here. Okay? So we are discovering the matrix. Probably there is a matrix there. We don't know yet. Okay. So. You know this work of six degree of separation? You know that the thing? Uh, there is this sociologist that uh, asked people to send a letter to someone he, he knows and so on. So he discovered that you have at least, no, at least, no, at most, six people that separates you from someone else. Okay? And then it started this interesting work talking about there is a small word uh, characteristic in complex networks. So again, if you get the neurons of your head, if you get the social relations, but if you get anything, if you get the food chain, you, you represent the food chain of the nature in a, in a network, it will have the, the, the power law, it will have the small world. Uh, and what is the small world? Tell. Any of these networks will have a fixed uh, top. Uh, a small number <laughs> of connections to, a, to start from one node and achieve the other. Okay. No, it's not necessarily six, because it depends on the kind of network. Okay? But it, it usually is a, is a small number. It's like five, uh, eight. It's not a thousand. Never a thousand. Okay? And why these networks, all these networks, have this behavior? I don't know. They have. They just have. Okay. And but uh, this is interesting because there is something there, right? The matrix is behind all the things. And the interesting thing people from complex networks starts to see is all these networks share some properties. It's like they capture information. They represent something. And we can get informa information not just looking for the content. 
you can look the topology, the relations, and the topology is semantics. The topology tells me something. And this is interesting because we didn't think about that before. Oh, what, what, the, what is the, the topology? What is that? There is, this term is not used in database. Okay, let's do a query of the topology. But what is this thing? So imagine that you have the network here. You see a network here? This is a Facebook uh, uh, friends of a uh, student, Celso, that produced the thing. There is no names here, so it's all, everything is hidden. They're just scholars. So this is people and, uh, and friendships in Facebook. Okay. And the interesting thing, uh, Celso run an algorithm here, run, run an algorithm here to do clustering and uh, you see, it de designed the clustering, and this, the algorithm doesn't know what is the person's, doesn't analyze the content. It's just analyze the, 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 the connections, just the connections. And that is, you see there is a topology there, and then Cells told me, okay, this is groups of people that I know from different places, and you see, then you can start to look at the topology and see other interesting things. For example, See this node here. Wow. Just a minute. See this node here. Hmm. It's connecting two clusters of nodes, you know? So imagine that this is a Twitter network, for example, and I want to spread some new or something, and I want that the 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 thing start in this in this part of the network, and I want that for some in some way it comes to this side, okay? In some sense, I must achieve this guy. If I don't achieve this guy here, I will not uh, connect the two things. Or you can imagine that this network could be a disease spread. Or a network of airports and connections of countries and so on, or roads. And I want to stop some disease to go to this group here, so I must do something in this node here. So the, the idea is, uh, you see, if you see this network, you see the power law. Because you see there is these nodes in the middle there that there are a lot of connections and the nodes uh, around that not much connections, okay? And you see probably the small world. Yes. And even if it's a big network. Uh, people from uh, complex networks developed metrics. And this idea of metrics it started long time ago for example, you may imagine that uh, Google applied these algorithms. And why Google applied these algorithms? Because pages are built by people. Okay? So persons produce pages. And persons define links between pages. So we can tell you that this network comes from the real world. Because the persons are interested in these subjects and they link the pages. So the web is a complex network and you can run some algorithms to for example to know the relevance of a page given of a given a, a, a keyword for example page rank algorithm you know page rank algorithm you heard about the page rank algorithm so it it analyzes for example for example how much other nodes points to you Okay, and based on this analysis, it can analyze what the relevance of something. So you can analyze the connectivity, the reputation, influence, okay, of some node, similarity, all these things you can do. And these algorithms they are not easy to implement because uh, it's not a, a simple query. You look all the network and you analyze the topology, which nodes receive more edges from the other nodes. But to know that I am the node that receives more nodes than the others, 
I must know the others. Okay? So it's, it's, it's not easy to design these algorithms. Okay? There are several examples, interesting examples, how people use that in science, for example. Okay? So you can analyze neurons, uh, the physical relations, so the neurons could be the nodes, the connections could be the edges. you decide. It's your uh, uh, relationships in physics, force relationships. So I, I, I went to an interesting defense where they are using grains uh, are nodes and force vectors are, as edges and analyze it as a complex network, social relationships, conceptual relationships, so you can get uh, this is uh, an example of uh, a food chain or a food web if you prefer food web in fresh water and the person that did the study uh, applied complex networks to uh, study the, the thing and the interesting thing you see is all the things I told you you can consider what is the relevance of some animal there or, or the the influence of some animal in this food chain I can analyze the impact of some changing in this behavior or so no, and so on and so forth this is a tuberculosis contagion okay which is an interesting complex network also. So the spread of a disease, probably in, in, the, in the most recent problems, could be interesting to analyze the Ebola spread, right? Uh, this is an interesting thing, which is uh, proteins. And the, the, the to analyze the relations about, among proteins is one of the most interesting things you can do. Because I don't know how much you remember of uh, your chemistry basis, okay? But uh, the idea is, do you remember what's a protein? Is the thing that you, is in the milk or something like that? <laughs> uh, you must, you, you don't remember what's a protein, it's something I must eat less, uh, a lot in the egg or something, okay. Yes, but that is more than that, I mean. Yes, you are right, but uh, what, what, why we, uh, why the living world uses a lot of proteins, okay, is because these chains can be molded, okay, in such a way, right? So you may imagine that the, the DNA and the RNA are the code, okay? And if you produce a, a chain of amino acids, it's amino acids, right? So it produces this chain, but it's not just a chain. It has a shape, okay? So it's like the engines of the, 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 the micro world, okay? It's the engines. So imagine, for example, a virus. And a virus goes there and needs to plug in the surface of a, a cell. So comes the virus. You remember the thing? Comes the virus. So the virus comes and must attach, right? And how it will attach? How it will be? Okay? We are talking about molecules, atoms. We are not talking about soil, okay? So, the shape of the virus, of the edges of the virus, must match the shape of the surface of the cell, which are two proteins that match. So, when the virus plug the cell, means that the protein in the virus can match the protein in the surface of the cell. And this is highly important. Why some virus doesn't bother us? Why some virus will not attack us? For example, if, uh, the people are talking about the Ebola virus. And the Ebola virus, uh, they discovered there is a variant in monkeys that goes to the air. You, you saw that? You saw this thing? No? Okay. But that is in monkeys. But it's not, it's still, until now, 
is not I, I, I think I, I, uh, uh, I don't remember if it's a theory or if they prove it okay but th they are now they are concerned if the Ebola virus from humans will suffer mutations and also you go to, to the, through the air okay but the thing is why uh, a virus that attacks a monkey the variation of there are some variations of Ebola that attacks the monkey it's not affect us sometimes it's because the protein for the attachment for example is one possible thing the protein for the attachment will not match our cells so even though you are you have a contamination of this this variation of Ebola it will not attach to your cells because the protein will not match then you are safe the thing is consider you are a researcher and you have an idea okay it's not a new idea the people are looking at that uh, I will do the following I will put in your blood some protein okay that will you go to the edge of this virus and will attach on the edge of this virus okay so I will produce this protein and this protein goes in your blood and just attach in this virus edge in such a way that the virus edge now is different and when it tries to attach in the surface of the cell you do not attach anymore because my protein now is blocking the thing okay oh this is genius let's do that good so you do that and you put in the blood of the guy and what can happen consider that I did all the tests and it works in the virus it works and I so okay it works let's put in the blood of a person and what will happen which another thing yeah this is the problem what happens in our in our in our body the same protein can be used in several tests the same thing we reuse a lot okay the problem is when you put this protein in the blood <laughs> who knows what will happen okay your feet will become green oh my god what's happening here I don't know some protein that blah blah blah, blah. you know uh, you start becoming you know uh, and, and, and you don't know why so to understand the relations of the several proteins and how they are connected is a complex network in some sense there are a group that are studying for example they map it all proteins of the HIV and all proteins of the human body that can be related to the HIV to understand is like a, a radiography of the of the small world okay of the micro world and try to understand the map of the things and we have but but this is a lot we are not talking about 10 okay we are not talking about a hundred we are talking sometimes about a million of things and how we analyze these things and find the spots where we can attack this is a complex network and okay so here uh, 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 I, I, I'm finishing just some works of my students there is a student that's working querying the topology which is Celso who produced the thing you, here is not the, the these slides are here just to show you some things that I'm working on with my students okay uh, so the idea is how you can do queries on the things okay some relations of the things we will not have uh, other other works of uh, folksonomies so I had a student that got data from the, the social networks and uh, mixed this information with ontologies so we produced a way of how to how to 
connect information from social networks to information from, from ontologists and exploit this information. Uh, another student that uh, tr we transformed a lot of uh, information av available in biological database in graphs and we, we run algorithms to, to get all this data and try to connect these graphs in a single graph and start to finding uh, some uh, latent semantics inside the graph. So the idea is how to get data from databases, spread databases, a data space we can tell, several uh, several bases of in different formats, how we can connect data, for example, in a linked, linked data approach. And then, can we exploit the semantics to produce something for ontologies or to produce ontologies? Um, I will not talk about these things. I have a student work extracting information from spreadsheets, which is the, 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 where the most of the scientific information is. In spreadsheets has now the most of the scientific information in the world. Yeah, you may imagine. So we are working to extract this information, try to put in ontologies or graphs to do our research. So this is some uh, parts of my work trying to get data, querying and uh, complex networks, exploiting latent cements to ontologies, and so on. This is just a brief uh, summary. If you, someone is interested in these topics, uh, I can talk more afterwards, okay? Questions? Everybody's happy?